Well, all right, all right, all right, and welcome back to another exciting episode of the Planet Gen X podcast, Explores the Deep, not Deep Space, I was about to say Deep Space Nine, the Discovery Universe. Yes, we're in the Discovery Universe, exploring episode three. I'm Sean, that over there is Brian, and What's we up? are so happy that you're joining us again. Yes, we had a two-part, boy, it was deep, man, long, two we had to deal with last week, and uh, we're that squeezing this rough, one right? in. Yeah, it was. It was. Still is. I'm living it right now. <laughs> uh, but by the time you see this, it'll be a little early than we told you because we, we said that it would come out on Wednesdays. But as you know, if you watch the podcast, which just went out right before we started recording this, um, that I'm going out of town. So we're not going to have I won't be around to do all the things I need to do to get it out on Wednesday. So I'm going to have it out on no later than Monday for sure, but probably Sunday more than likely. Yeah. Actually, Monday may be a better day now that I think about it. You looking yeah. forward to your trip? I am. I am a little change of pace. Yep, for sure. So, yeah, we're in. Uh, before we get to that, though, I almost had a brain fart. You Don't did. forget to hit that subscribe button. Hit the like button. Thumbs up. Thumbs down. Leave a comment. All that good jazz. There's a nice little animation on the screen saying everything I'm doing or doing right. everything I'm saying or something like that. Just plug that in. Y'all should know I'm just a little bit high. So that's why I'm kind of all over the road right now. But anyway, let's get back to seriousness and discovery. Season five, episode three. The name of the episode is Brian. I didn't even look. <laughs> so prepared. Is it Janal? Is yes, it is. Janal, okay. you have won the prize. All right. So, yeah, we open in uh, Starfleet headquarters with a beautiful panning shot of all the different ships. We see uh, all kinds. I saw that, that one giant thing looked like just like a storage shed with the name of a ship on the top <laughs> of it. You know, I was like, what the fuck is that thing, man? They did have some wild designs in there. Um. But uh, we joined the uh, we joined Burnham, the doctor and Booker talking about uh, Locke and Maul, specifically uh, Maul. Really, they're talking about how young she was when, you know, she went to prison and, and joined the uh, the courier guild. Kyle, and well, uh, they, they basically, you know, say that Locke is a, more of an unknown. And then they you know go over what he does know about Maul. Right. Yeah, exactly. So um, Burnham notes that Federation guidelines says uh, she can't. She has to send a uniform team, which instantly means Booker's out, and uh, he gets a bit butthurt about it. Burnham's concerned; it's personal, and she probably she's probably right, you know, as far as his connection with Maul that he knows about. But uh, Booker wants a chance to redeem himself, so uh, Burnham says she thinks about she'll think about it and uh, leaves it at that for a little while. And right before we exit out of that scene, there's a little back and forth between her and the doctor. And we re we are aware that she can't sleep at the moment. So uh, I guess keep that in the back of your mind. It obviously has relevance at some point. Maybe. I, you never know. Sometimes they throw out these things and we never circle back to them. Right? Yeah, that's true, man. Sometimes <laughs> they get ambitious and play, lay these little hooks down, you know, and uh, and forget to follow up on them and shit. So. Right. <clears throat> yeah, we joined Killy in the briefing where, well, they do, uh, you know, Burnham and uh, the doctor and Booker. They joined Killy in the briefing room to get the skinny on the planet Trill where they'll be heading. It's their next destination because of the, if you'll remember, the poem they found, the, uh, the Romulan poem. I forget the actual name of it uh, at the top of my head right now. But uh, yeah, they have exactly. to figure out where they should actually start looking on the planet. So they figure out uh, that the trill spots, you know, their little spots that they have on on their going all the way down to their top of their head to the tip of their toes, apparently, according right. to Dax, uh, <laughs> that they're just like human finger or fingerprints in general. They're all unique. And they trace it to an old trill named uh, Janal. Bix, who lived 800 years ago. Remember that number, kids? We we talked about that. That's back one. Uh, the same time as the Romulan scientist, Valley. Hey, yeah. They're doing so, that. Yeah. <laughs> Fun with math. <laughs> Tal says that Janal was a symbiont host and that it would be unusual for a symbiont to live 800 years, but not impossible. 
So they need to find the current host of that symbiont. So naturally they need the guardians to find the information on all the current hosts. So we'll inevitably meet gray, right? We got a little tease of that at the beginning with the, you know, remember back last episode or, or actually remember back. Cause they, that's when they like to remind you of the stuff, you know, you're going to see that, that hasn't been brought up in a while. Yeah. <laughs> It's like we haven't seen gray in forever, but they stuck this in here. So that means we're going to see gray again. Yeah. So pretty not heavy my favorite. on your two favorite characters. This episode. Yeah. This one's pretty rough on me, dude, but I do get a little redemption. Uh, yeah. Burnham decides that book can go and a new crew member shows up and we cut to the door opening and surprise. The new crew member is now commander Rainer. Of course we knew that is who the new crew member was. We weren't that surprised. I don't know why they were so shady about it. <laughs> right. <laughs> hush, hush. Yeah. Right off the bat, though, Rainer is starting some heat, really. Right? He feels like he's starting some heat, but then he mentions his quarters are not as big as they uh, used to be. But then again, he used to have her job talking to Burnham. And it turns out it was meant as a joke. But uh, it kind of went over like a turd in a punch bowl. And they're setting setting this relationship up from from like the get go. Even out of the gate, he was kind of a dick towards her, right? Yeah, right. Yeah. So it's not like he's just gonna go, oh, thanks for doing this for me and come aboard and you know, back down. He's not that guy, man. He's gonna he's gonna be the guy he was, and he's doing well. I like it. Uh, so we move to the bridge where everybody is introduced to the commander, and we finally get an updated rundown of who the fuck all these people are because they don't do that often enough. Right. Um, it seems like it's been a while. So we get a whole rundown of everybody's name and then they jump off the trail. So, um, upon arrival, we have the scene with Tao and Reno where, uh, Tao is all jacked up on coffee and she's all giddy and nervous about seeing gray after so many months. I want to say it's been six months. I think I saw mentioned it could be wrong, but, um, Tao is called to the bridge and Reno Ask if because Stamets is back behind them, uh, and so she stays behind to talk to Stamets. So, uh, ask Stamets if he realizes that there appears to be trouble in paradise for Tal and Gray, right? She read right into it, man. Uh, good, all I can say about it. Good, maybe, maybe we won't see one or the other as much. I don't know. I, I wonder if they're trying to, to code Stamets as autistic. I guess they kind of have, right? Yeah, it seems that way. And why actually, while we bring Stamets up, I think it's worth noting that uh, the real Paul Stamets was on Joe Rogan this past week, and he uh -huh. is the modern father of uh, mycology, which yeah. we all you know enjoy so much. And uh, well, some of us anyway. And uh, that's who Paul Stamets in discovery is based off of because he Let me just say we all enjoy it it's just a matter of how you enjoy it exactly because that's true we're yeah. all related w without it there wouldn't be trees there wouldn't be all kind of wildlife and, and stuff so yep that's right and so you know paul stamets in discovery he created the spore drive using mycelial this mycelial network so boom boom it was a little homage to him so it's worth noting if you did not know that so there we are and i agree with you yeah they do definitely play him in that way that vein for sure. Oh yeah. So um, we jump to the bridge where they are about to beam down to Trill, but they are refused by Trill authorities, saying Z, that's one of the uh, guardians, the head guardian, if y'all remember, uh, would like to speak to Burnham. Z's hollow image shows on the bridge, uh, and he tells Burnham that the information she's looking for has been protected for centuries, and that if she wants it, she'll have to answer a question. And uh, the question is, what does the fourth point? Where? Yeah. Where does the fourth point? I may have wrote it down wrong. I don't know. I don't, uh, I, no, I think you may have written, written it down right because I think they did word it kind of yeah. weird, right? What does the fourth point? And yeah, that's right. So they reckon it's the fourth. They're sitting there talking back and forth. And they reckon it's the fourth line of the poem and where it leads. So they already know. And they say Beta Z, and they win a hundred million trillion bars of gold press latinum. Yay! Yay. Hooray! <laughs> the crowd yeah. goes wild. Yep, the crowd goes mild. Well, actually, the yeah. crowd goes mild here, right? <laughs> yeah, no doubt. Because uh, Z tells them that the current host, Cal Zara Bix, is still alive and would speak to no outsider unless they answered that riddle. 
So Burnham asks if others come looking, have come looking, and Z tells her that they are the first. So I guess everybody's got a huge sigh of relief for the moment anyway. Yeah. She kind and, of drills him, and he's just kind of like, hey, I don't know anything. Yeah, I don't know shit, man. I don't know a damn thing. I wasn't even there. Right. Uh, <laughs> they are permitted to transport to the caves of Makala. Yep. And then uh, we arrive in the caves, and Gray is all giddy and making all this eye contact with Tao, and it's just all yuck to me, but whatever. <laughs> Um, they meet with Cal's Arabics and find out that the original symbiont is no longer living, but passed on the information to another symbiont. Like, I guess like some kind of Vulcan mind meld with, for trills, you know, they can do that with the, the, the ooze, uh, yep. the goo meld, I guess you call it. So, uh, Talzera, I'm sorry, Calzera tells Burnham she must speak to the symbiote directly, and they all wonder how that's possible. Then Tal pipes up and says, it's a Jintara. And uh, for those who've watched Deep Space Nine, you're familiar with this practice. I love I, discharge all over you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I love the the intermingling of all the. It seems like we're getting a lot more uh, reference to the past. Yeah, I really I like how they realize and acknowledge their past because they they've been kind of not doing well with it. Well, and it helps that now they're past TNG because before they weren't, so they couldn't acknowledge TNG at all. So. It helps. It helps a lot. Yeah, I'm well, glad. I mean, I think that, you know, probably, I think a lot was learned from other IP of like, like Picard, for example. Yeah. Uh, with fan service. Mm -hmm. And they're kind of, they're kind of leaning into that a little more this season, I think. Yeah. Because, yeah, I've I said it before, it works. It's working. Yeah. People like it, man. We, we we really like our old TNG cast for sure, and we like everything to do with it. It was a huge part of our lives for sure. It's religious, man. So, um, yeah, it allows Junal's body to be separated for a limited time, and uh, one of the crew will have to act as a vessel. So, uh, Dr. Colbert pipes right? up. Yeah, it's me, me. I'll do it, Gary. <laughs> right. I want to do yeah, it. <laughs> I'll do it. So, uh, yeah, he pipes up volunteers and uh, annoying amount of looks between Gray and Tal again. So, they leave us with that. And meanwhile, back at Starbase, we see Saru tending to some plants when his fiance Tarina enters with a plant of some kind. They chat about nothing really. And then he wants to talk about their engagement announcement. Uh, he takes issue with the description of himself, the handsome and erudite captain Saru. Right. Uh, <laughs> And then a Vulcan colleague, uh, Mr. Duvin, shows up to speak to Tarina. And we notice Saru getting a bit, I think, uh, maybe jealous. Like, who's this dude talking to my chick? I don't know what that look could have been otherwise, because it was definitely a weird look. I think it was just more a puzzled look. Like, he, he doesn't understand, like, the relationship, maybe? Perhaps. I don't know. I thought maybe he was just getting a little jealous or something. Who knows? Could be. But, uh... Back on Discovery, we see Tilly slinking up to Commander Rayner, saying Burnham wants her to show Rayner around, and he real realizes that uh, she is a babysitter and tries to blow her off. Uh, she requests to speak freely, and uh, she basically talks down to him and tells him it's his captain's orders to do what, you know, go and meet the crew one-on-one -on -one and get a tour of the ship and all that jazz. So, uh... I really felt a phantom bitch slapping coming on right about that time too. Right. But uh, Rainer's response is, "I didn't, Lieutenant. You know, didn't what? Give you She's permission like, to speak freely? Yeah." And uh, I loved that. I was like, "Hell's yeah!" And uh, he puts her in her place, and I think uh, it may be the greatest scene in Discovery history, honestly, because I really, really thoroughly enjoyed that. And it does get a little better for sure, uh, but uh, with his abuse of her. Back on Trill, <laughs> the ceremony <laughs> is being set up, and Tal asks Gray, uh, "Can then, Tal asks if Gray can have one of their dopey, you know, gushy sessions where they talk and uh, when he's on duty?" And uh, nothing worth seeing here other than Gray drops the "We should talk" bomb. That's you right. know, we need and it's to really talk. just kind of like a high school relationship type. Thing, it right? is, it is, and uh, you know, it's like interesting that we're three re relationships in this this season. It seems to where this is all going on at the same time. Everybody's uh, 
in this episode, particularly all three relationships are, are trying to divide. Yeah. And, um, so the of ceremony, be nothing new. they've been doing that like all this time. They did it with Stamets and the doctor and other yes. relationships. Indeed uh, they have already. So yeah, yeah, they love to break them up and then bring them back together at the end, man. It's, it's a little annoying actually, because it's, it's just, uh, you I have little notes in here, writer device, and it's just that kind of stuff, man. Yeah. Um, so, uh, the ceremony begins and they do the transfer. Uh, the first thing Dr. Colbert asks is, well, he's not Dr. Colbert anymore. He's Janal. Uh, he asks what the year is and they tell him. And, uh, he says it, he doesn't have any idea about, you know, what the clue says, but he knows exactly where it is. But, uh, they're like, great, let's beam over there. And he, he just insists that they, uh, walk there and, uh, he's very insistent and, that's I don't know. I'm, Isn't this like an overall thing that they had to do is like, uh, you know, expand well, yeah. a little time in the episode because you yeah, know, we got the whole we can't beam down. Well, that's yeah, planet, right. Yeah, the brighter device. That's what I've got in quotes right there because you know it's just like if you remember back from episode one, our little electromagnetic field is the same thing. Yeah, you know, uh, it just keeps them from using that fucking transporter. It's it, whatever they can figure out to fuck their tech of the week is the kind of stuff they've got to figure out, and we call bullshit on it all the time because sometimes it's good, and a lot of times it's ham fisted, though. Right. In my humble opinion. Um, Which it kind of feels like it was a hit here again, right? Yes, indeed, it did very much so, and that's why it was noted. Back at Starfleet, we see Saru's first meeting as an ambassador, and he looks a little uncomfortable. But, uh, however, his solution seems to be amiable to all parties. Uh, amenable to our, all well, parties. Well, that's, that's him, right? Like, it, he's trying to be a people pleaser because, you know, before uh, being on Discovery, he was a little bit more reserved, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. And they kind of had to bring very, that out of him. Yeah, very timid, too, yeah, before he passed he's gonna through that thing he did. Step back into that in a new role, right? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so we do get a little tight shot of Mr. Dubin looking curious as the, at the president at president Torino when she votes in favor of the proposal. Um, did she go against her own beliefs to support Saru? That's the question. Dubin right. asks to speak to Saru alone and Dubin admonishes Saru for making statements that could be inflammatory and that he should be more mindful of how he presents things as in politics. It's all about optics. And he believes the president's judgment is clouded by love. And Saru says Dubin is talking in circles and doesn't really understand his point. So Dubin gets to the point and says that their interspecies marriage would just, uh, destroy the president's political career. So obviously Saru's like, ah, oh, well, I can't do that. You know, in his mind, he didn't say that, but he's just thinking that, you know, he's thinking that. So, well, Devin's kind of making a big deal with the purist and, you know, the delicate balance going yep. on right now. Yeah. And apparently the president's not into the purists that much. So, right. It's a very delicate situation. And their marriage would obviously not be a good thing. To the right. Paris. Exactly. So back on Trill, we're on walkabout, I'm calling it, and Burnham is asking a lot of questions, which uh, Janelle doesn't at, want to answer. He just wants to enjoy everything. He's getting yeah. his, you know, few hours in where he can live for a little bit. They hear a massive roar in the background, and Janelle points out only out why he chose this spot to hide the clue, because no one in their right mind would go where they're going. Uh, 800 years ago, the uh, Federation president brought together six scientists. He tells, Janelle starts telling this story as they're walking about yeah. how uh, 800 years ago, the Federation president brought together six scientists in secret. Janelle, Dr. Valak, and four other scientists we're not going to ever get the name of, Federation and non-Federation scientists, because Janelle will not give up the names. We know one of them died, though, because he says... Uh, their mission to research the progenitors and their message. They found uh, technology beyond their imagination. And one of the group tried to activate it and was killed. So yep. only three would have been uh, alive after the fact, besides Balakin, you know. 
So they all made a pact to hide all the details and pretend they found nothing. So they told the president they found nothing and they hid everything. With so many constant wars around the galaxy at the 24th station, uh, 24th century at the time, you know, they felt it needed protecting because there was a lot. Y'all remember we watched TNG and Deep Space Nine, you know, you Dominion War, the fucking board war and shit, man. There was just all kinds of different skirmishes going with just, you know, with Starfleet, but uh, a lot of different parties in the galaxy fighting each All other over the quadrants yeah that we didn't even see yeah yeah so uh, back on discovery the doors open to rainer's back and we hear tilly's voice say sir and he kind of gives a little flinch of annoyance and i felt it too man i was like right there with him <laughs> like i am in rainer right now dude i'm totally feeling it and uh geez that sounded a little rough didn't it uh, probably should need to rephrase that a bit. They, I think they presented him on purpose to connect with people like you who are who are super annoyed with Tilly. Yes. Specifically. Yeah. I appreciate it so much, man. I'm glad I'm glad somebody in that damn production recognized it. So uh Tilly introduces Commander Reese for his uh one on one. He's I guess he's one of the first that Rainer talks to, and uh Rainer wants it short and sweet. He interviews more crew with various stories given, and uh, now we know that the Tribble has been neutered through one of these stories. We were talking about the Tribble the other day, crawling up the wall, right. and I was freaked out about how it was going to multiply and shit. And, and you said something about genetics, and uh, now they've mentioned it being neutered, which I'm sure they um, said at the time. Yeah, and uh, you know, the, basically he does give everybody like th these parameters. Right. It's like in 20, less than 20 words. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Yeah. You got 20 words to yeah. uh, do your one on one on, basically. So, uh, Tilly dislikes, I just love how much Tilly dislikes Rainer, man. It's like my own personal outlet to make Tilly's life miserable. <laughs> it's great. Yeah. And you're right. Yeah. They wrote it for that reason. Yeah. I'm and, sure. Uh, so, we're back in the cave and it's more Tilly and Gray Gush. Long story short, it's clear Gray is ready to move on and Tao is ready to cling on. And that's cling on, not cling on. So, yeah, she's very clingy, but uh, it is what it is, right? They they don't really, I mean, they say they're breaking up. Yeah, I guess we're breaking up. So they break up. Yeah, and, and it's not a big deal. Yeah, Nobody it's cares. not a big deal. Nobody fucking freaks out and goes crying off in the corner. He going to cry when you get in the car. Uh, yeah, and I already mentioned this season's already about relationships falling apart, man. All of them, and not just necessarily. I'm sorry, I said this season, this episode, this episode specific. I, I would argue this season, I, I would argue we're going to see more of it as the season comes. Yeah, I think that's true too. Uh, but I was I was focused on these two, and I just played it's obviously playing out here, so we'll see that one done, one and done. Uh, out on the walkabout, Burnham is getting anxious, and uh, she's been asking questions after questions. And as they're talking, Booker notices a carcass. Uh, we jump to later in the evening, and we hear more of that roaring we heard earlier. They arrive at their destination, but a cloaking critter is right in between them and the clue. So Janal says they'll have to come back, and uh, or else they will die there. Right. So, of course, they choose the Starfleet option, which is to Starfleet up and just figure out another way. And uh, Book distracts the critter while Burnham tries to get to the clue. And uh, when a second critter shows up, it really gets kind of out of control and Booker gets stung in the leg. And we jump back to the ship where Rainer is still researching with Tilly and Stamets comes in, claiming to have a eureka moment. And it also seems Stamets might have found his new calling too, or at the what's this thing? Did you kind of get that from that? Possibly. Yeah. yeah, he's found this, you know, he's talking about the progenitor technology and he's thinking about all these great things they can do. And he's just got, you know, talking to Rainer about all these things. Rainer could give a fuck. You know, well, you've gone past your 20 words, bro. Yeah, the thing with Stamets is it, it kind of kind of like I was talking earlier about right. how, how he's possibly coded as being autistic. This, this is his new shiny. This is something mm -hmm. for him to focus and obsess on to get him out of the whole funk from the sport drive. Exactly. Right? Yeah, that's how I saw it. Yeah, I completely concur. Uh, yeah, Tilly goes over his 20 words. 
you know, basically uh, Raider throws him out a lifeline and then just like yanks it right back as soon as it hits 20, right? Yep, sure does. Brings him right back to reality. Um, Tilly finally snaps and <laughs> says she won't get permission to speak freely. She does it anyway, uh, giving the commander what for and just generally being a pain in the ass. And back at Starfleet, we join a nervous Saru trying to tell Tarina that they should postpone the wedding. Uh, and she clocks Duvin almost immediately and gets right, pissed yeah. off about it as only way a Vulcan will display pissed, you know, but I think she conveyed it and she storms out in only a Vulcan way because it was a storming out, but it was very slow and, and you know, uh, she just glided out. Well, I mean, I think you and I have both had people in our lives like this. There are some peop people that, you know, it it's when they get quiet that you need to worry. Oh, right? yeah, indeed. <laughs> and I think they no, carried no. that out pretty well here. Oh, definitely, definitely. And, uh, they, yeah, and it's it'll, be, it'll have an interesting thing later. So back on the old walkabout, Burnham rips the stinger out of Booker's leg, and the uh, critters are still searching him out. And suddenly Booker notices some rocks that aren't rocks, they're eggs. And once they realize it's pointless and Janelle was right, they decide to beam out, but they can't beam out. They're getting interference from the minerals in the rock. Rider <laughs> device. Jesus. Yeah. So that's what you can see how this pattern is getting annoying kids. Right. So Burnham's crazy ass walks out and disengages her phasers like an anti Spider-Man deal. Uh, and holds herself, closes her eyes and holds her hands out. And, uh, she book walks kind of out there with her after a minute. And then she tells him to do his little book or mind trick that he does to talk to creatures and uh, tell them we're, we're no threat. Yeah. We're no threat. And, uh, the creatures allow them to leave. And on their way back, they find Janelle laying on a rock. And turns out that Janal was just testing them the whole time. And the device was right where he was laying in the rock over there. And uh, he gives them the, the new piece of the map and moseys off into the sunset. They do this whole thing about red herring, right? Yeah, red herring. Why is it red? I, you know, I used to know. Uh, I know part of it, but I can't remember. Because, you know, it's part of fox hunting. I know that. Because... Right. Uh, on the 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 fish i think they they rubbed it all over a red uh maybe it was a fox tail or some or maybe blood from the fish i don't know but it's it's in fox hunting that that comes from and okay. uh because it's fake for the dogs it's a fake fox so that's why it's a red you know it's red and it's a fake so red herrings are you know there to throw you off the scent da -da -da. um Back at Starfleet, Saru asks Tarina for a private word, and he apologizes. She accepts, and he's kind of freaked out that she's ready to move on from the conflict so soon. I mean, like, he's used to people kind of, you know, wanting to stew for a little while, I guess. And uh, I don't they, know. From her behavior, it seems like, you know, she's still feeling it, right? Maybe just a little bit, you know, yeah. uh, like a Vulcan would. They might hold it just slightly under the surface, but not show it too much. Right. But uh, they decide to go ahead and announce their wedding as soon as possible. So, yay them. And uh, back in the cave, they reverse the Jintara, and the doctor blinks back in. And uh, Burnham sends everyone back to the ship except Tal. Tal stays behind. I guess there's some kind of reason. I guess to say goodbye to Grave, giving her a little extra goodbye time. But uh, back on the ship, Rainer walks into the lounge. I, I don't want to call it 10 forward because I don't know if it is 10 forward. Probably not because there's not, there may not be that many decks. I don't know. Right. But uh, he walks into a lounge, not unlike 10 forward, and steps right up next to Tilly and he tries to smooth things over between them, much to my dismay. And she wants, obviously, in her Starfleet, wants hugs and caring and, and, my Starfleet and the military, I don't think there's room for hugs and caring. So, you know, that's probably why she annoys me so much. Yeah. But uh, Burnham and the doctor talk about his experience and uh, 
Burnham is obviously looking for answers is what we can take away from that little exchange. So is the doctor. The doctor is obviously doing it too. He's been through some weird shit. You know, right. caught up in the mycelial network and stuff. Uh, we go back to the cave on Trill one last time, and Gray is performing some ceremony. And while he's doing that, we get a montage of all the crew because he's talking and doing this chant thing. And well, he's not chanting. He's he's uh, telling everybody how special they are, basically. And uh, we go through a montage of all the crew as he's doing that talking, and they're among, doing their daily routines and whatever. And uh, it's a big inspirational speech. And then they send the little trill up the river. You know, you see the trill swimming away and everyone starts embracing each other, holding their arms out and touching each other. And one starts to walk up to Talon. Boom, I clocked it right on that. Did you too? Obviously I knew, I knew there was either going to be action or something, but I knew, uh, lock them all. There had there. to be some reason for all this. Yeah. I mean, like yeah. we were, we were going to get something because yeah, we hadn't seen them the whole episode. Right. You know, they've been thinking, well, they hadn't showed up yet. Something, you know, Lucky kind of had the I same guess. thought, like, you know, they've been absent the whole episode. We're, we're going to have to, like, at least get, you know, a minute or something, some some kind of pop somewhere of what yeah. they're doing. Yeah, absolutely. And <clears throat> so it's it's the divide and conquer, right? Yep, exactly. So uh, as they as they embrace each other, we see as the hand moves away, there's a little tracking device placed on Tal's uniform. And that person walks away, and right before they walk away, they walk into the camera, tilt the head back, hood back, and it's small. And scene. Yep. The end. So, yep, they managed to get a tracking device on tile, so they'll know every move that Discovery makes now. Unless that, you know, she throws the uniform in the wash and maybe it gets fucked up in the wash or something like that. Right. Know, maybe that's what we can hope for. I don't know. Yeah. Well, I doubt sonic they use wash. Uh, water in the no, future. No, that's what I was that, saying. Right? Sonic wash, yeah. But maybe yeah. the sonic thing will z- zap it out. But, maybe. you know, I don't think we'll be that lucky. No, not at all. So, uh, so uh, the question is, like, how did she get there, right? Like, Yeah, I mean, like, they were... Were they tracking something else? Yeah, I mean, that's that's the question, right? So, and, and, and the uh z that head guardian was really big and up their uh security and shit so and i and i was like dude you're sitting there talking burnham didn't even offer any kind of fucking yay yeah, but not these two you need to really watch out which is what i was yeah. saying i'm like not these two motherfuckers y'all better get with it and uh, she didn't do that i was i thought that was a little strange for sure I don't know, man. Like I said, I think this is going to be like a, a relationship season. I think they're going to do the classic thing of like, I'm wondering if they're going to do the some friends become enemies, but I'm pretty sure they're going to do the some enemies become friends, right? Yeah. Like yeah. Maul is probably going to come around. It could be locked. You never know. They may play with the roles or whatever, but I, I got a feeling that's definitely coming. It's quite possible. I can almost see Booker dying too. Right. Yeah, because maybe maybe we pull back on the whole the whole Saru is going to die thing after it didn't happen because we really needed it to happen in that episode for that to go through. So I think it's kind of lost at this point. Well, I, I honestly think that the the uh, purist was was kind of a telling lead, and perhaps they make make an attempt on his life. Well, That's yeah, you got a point. A little assassination attempt on his life could be a could be a thing for sure. But, uh, but you never know. It's, it's all just prospecting right now. That's right. Yeah, we're just mining for bullshit, for sure. Um, what'd you think of the episode? Um, I mean, it was just another discovery episode. To me. Yeah, I mean, honestly, it just it didn't it didn't do all that much, really. Uh, it just really furthered Rainer's character, and uh, as far as just getting him past knowing the crew and whatnot, but I didn't think there was anything major in this episode. There wasn't anything real revealing about this story arc for this season. Uh, I Overall, thought I'm just not invested in their, their methodology of storytelling. I am either. That's why I love strange new worlds so much. I mean, yeah. I really miss the old days, man, the way they told stories. I don't mind, you know, a two or three parter dude. It's fine. They did it a lot back in the day. They even did more than that sometimes. But well, I think uh, you put it best earlier. It, 
it it seems like everything's just ham fisted, right? Yeah. Yeah, just they're just it's cookie like, cutters. There's no mystery, there's no subtlety, you know, everything can be explained fairly easily. It's like they 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 learn their writing from just downloading scripts that all followed a formula and that's the only formula they know so they just wedge stuff in there to make their shit work and it's very they plug it in and they pad for time right yeah 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 you can see it all the time nowadays it's the 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 great writers really shine because it's night and day yeah uh, you know you really see the good stories like uh oh uh how come I cannot remember the name of that show, that Star Wars show we love so much? Andor. Andor, yeah. Andor just being so brilliant, man. Uh, yeah. Fallout has the potential to be there. Uh, well, you you would know. You might say that that's not true. I don't know. I don't know yet. I, I'm still, I've still got mixed feelings. Like I said, I binged it, and so I'm going to go through, and you, know, you let me know when you want to watch episode two, and I'm going to watch episode two, and I'm going to rewatch them with you. So we can talk about them. Sounds like a plan. Well, yeah. So overall, let's see. We gave those the other day, like what? Oh, no, that was last night. Never mind. I don't think we gave right. those stars last time, did we? That was just Fallout we, we did that on. We did Fallout. I, I don't yeah. think we've done it for a while since then. Yeah. So this one, then. I wouldn't go, you know, I wouldn't go big with. They're probably like three. I was going to say like maybe three because it had some elements that, that you liked. I don't know. I, I have found myself struggling to pay attention on yeah. this episode. So I, I would probably go like two, five. Okay. Fair dude. I mean, I could see that being a score. I mean, I could bring mine down to that for sure. So yeah, that's fair. Yeah. Definitely fair. So, I mean, it was uh, an absolute horrible uh, and you, you know, I could understand some of it. And even there were some, some decent performances, mm -hmm. but I just, you know, it's kind of, kind of like, uh, getting over the art style for the clone wars. Yeah. Uh, right. it's getting over the writing here. You know, it almost is just, just like a filler story. It's what I would call a connector story. Yeah. Like they they'll put this story in between an, like maybe three episode arc. You know, I know realize we're already in art, but you got to understand, like, sometimes they'll, you know, stuff will run together better yeah. uh, the way they intended to, to put it out. And sometimes you just need these connector stories to to further. We suffer. See, here's the thing. I pointed out that they didn't do the thing where we introduce everybody and welcome everybody back. They got us right into the action. Well, this is what you pay for in the end. You right. pay for it like this with the connector story. Yeah, because they got to yeah. go, they got to get their information out somehow. And you don't want, you know, Mr. Exposition the whole time. Right. Yeah, they got to come up with good creative ways to do it. So, yeah, it's, uh, it's all right. We'll move, we'll wait till, uh, four comes out and move on with life because that one's just, you know, it, you, you watch it once and you're done. I, I do still enjoy watching, uh, Doug Jones perform. Based, yes, you know, Saru basically yeah. all the time. Yeah. Uh, and really and truthfully, that was the only part of the, the story I had any interest in. Right. And uh, I'm glad you, you did bring him up before we left because I, I did want to point out that uh, we, we thought we might lose him for a few episodes, right? So he's right here in the mix just doing his thing uh, back at Starfleet. So cool. Definitely cool. Yeah. So we don't have to do without him because we were kind of pissed off about that if we did. The right. one character we liked, we said. Yeah. So Let's there it is, guys. It. Yeah, please don't. So, uh, yeah, there it is in a nutshell. It's a man in a nutshell. No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so thank you so much for joining us. We hope you made it till the end, and thank you if you did. And uh, when I get back in town, we'll have a new podcast. I don't think that will be delayed shouldn't hopefully and uh we'll get back on track where these come out on wednesdays again so until then guys be excellent to each other uh, brian and i will see you on the flip side thanks everybody yeah peace out Ka -tow.